Shortly before the start of World War II, the German High Command began a secret investigation into the powers of the supernatural. Ancient legend told of a race of warriors who used neither weapons nor shields, and whose superhuman power came from within the Earth itself. As Germany prepared for war, the SS secretly enlisted a group of scientists to create an invincible soldier. It is known that the bodies of soldiers killed in battle returned to a secret laboratory near Koberlands where they were used in a variety of scientific experiments. It was rumored that toward the end of the war, the Allied forces met German squads that fought without weapons, killing only with their bare hands. No one knows who they were or what they were doing, but their legacy remains hewn in the living rock of Stonehenge. Oh, yeah! <laughs> it's like as soon as he hit that quote, I was like, wait, where are we going to Stonehenge with this one? <laughs> Stonehenge, dun dun. <laughs> Fuck yes. I was like, it's a little long, but it's so worth it. <laughs> it's it's very worth it. It's worth it uh, to you, our listener of Low Some Things, a horror movie podcast. Welcome. My yes. name my name is John, as, and as always, with me is my uh, co-host Josh. Josh, you're, how are you doing, sir? I'm I'm doing quite well. It is 2023, and we are watching a movie from 1977 called Ken Wiederhorn's Shockwaves. Yeah, not to be confused with Tombs of the Blind Dead in any way. No, not not even even remarkably similar to Tombs of the Blind Dead. <laughs> oh my god, wait till you see the second one. They they, they come right out of the ocean. <laughs> of the two oh, the it, Blind the, Dead the, stuff. The yeah. I, was, I was like, is there a Shockwaves 2 <laughs> in which they also come out of the ocean? Shockier waves. <laughs> Shockwaves 2, this time the goggles are not made of crap. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so many similarities to Tombs of the Blind Dead, but I actually enjoyed this movie more than Tombs of the Blind Dead. This movie, for a movie with a micro budget, it's it's really not bad. It's uh, it's a nice, nice little movie. They they kind of kept it fairly tight. Surprisingly. Kept it tight! Oh, shit. Yeah. There are some holes and some yeah, problems yeah. sure and, of course and, but but yeah it's enjoyable it's it's um there's so so there's there's two modifiers of movies there's a good movie and a fun movie to watch and and the flip side of both of those is a bad movie and a movie that's not fun to watch this is a bad movie that's fun to watch that's true that's definitely true it is not high cinema by any stretch. And, yeah. um, as far as just being a straight little horror romp, uh, it's, it's perfectly fine and fun to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. If you, yeah. If you like watching Brooke Adams trudge through mud for an hour, it's just the best movie ever. Oh man. If you like to watch Brooke Adams strip down to a bikini and swim in just any body of water, <laughs> then this is the movie for you. <laughs> I mean, if you want to see Brooke Adams strip down to a bikini and enter without even a second thought, yeah. <laughs> any sort of water whatsoever, yeah. this is your movie. Is it the ocean? Sure. Is it some sort of weird, unmoving piece of water surrounded by obvious danger? Yeah. Get them out and get in there. Oh, yeah. yeah. Is it? Is it in an... In an in a state where every square inch of the state contains something that wants to kill you? Yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Much yeah. more dangerous than slow-moving Nazis. <laughs> if if we've previously seen that the water comes up to about a few inches below your knees, why not strip down and go for a swim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody looked grossed out in that movie, which I was I was like that's pretty impressive acting. Yeah, yeah, that that water looked scummy and unpleasant. I, it, it, what a year for Peter Cushing, really. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strong of voice, flimsy of limb. <laughs> My God. <laughs> he looked like a wire coat hanger man <laughs> yeah. with a scarf around his neck. Yeah, they really 
wanted to, like, get those arms unsleeved and just let them kind of jiggle around. <laughs> it's When I see people in that state, I just, I'm like, how is this man even alive? What is yeah. keeping him? Is it the emperor? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was, like, it was he's the, the zombie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, him and John Carradine, who lived another oh, ten years. He yeah. lived ten years after that movie. He probably, like, had more kids after this. Oh, my God. <laughs> he had several more kids who died of autoerotic asphyxiation. There it is! And we the got ten there! Years of his life. Hey! <laughs> we mentioned a Carradine for the first time on the show, and within moments... <laughs> Belt around the neck. Oh no, no, around the neck and around the the dick. Really? He had a yeah. He, he tied off the old chap. Yeah, there. I I went through. I was like, you know, I don't I don't know the facts. Maybe that's a uh, a, a new wives tale. So I went and I looked it up, and it was like, oh no! In fact, they found him. It was not ruled a suicide or foul play. They found him with stuff. He was had his neck tied to the door and his junk tied to the same door. And I mean, to be fair, <laughs> that kind of is a form of foul play. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to 2023. Woo! This year's going to be different. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Woo. Uh, oh, yep. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay. Let's bring it back down. Let's get back to seriousness. <laughs> Ken Wiederhorn. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Also known. He directed some other horror stuff. Uh, yeah, he did Return of the Living Dead Part 2, which is, which is a classic. Mm. Uh, he, he made Meatballs Part 2. Uh, <laughs> a classic. Whenever you need, whenever you need a sequel, you go to him. Uh, yeah. he directed some, uh, a little bit of 21 Jump Street. Yeah. And some other movies that didn't look worth mentioning. That's true. Yeah. Some other horror movies. He also directed seven episodes of Freddy's Nightmare, ah, the TV series. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's true. He's, I mean, he's, yeah. you know, serviceable. Uh, he, he did some he, things. He got the job done. Return of the Living Dead Part 2 is a decent movie. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And this, this was his, his first feature film. Uh, this was his feature film debut as a director. I think he did a good job of the kind of, uh, like, getting beyond the kind of things that would stop me dead in my tracks making a movie like this. Like, everybody's going to know that this is Florida. Or... Everybody's everybody's gonna know that this this cement boat could never move, or you know, just he's just like you know what I don't really give a shit. Or why would why would zombies sit at the just stand at the bottom of the ocean for forty years? It makes no sense. Yeah, yeah the the whole the whole thing with their boat the the what is it Protorus Proteus yeah the whatever Priapus or whatever it was called yeah. Yeah, it it gets mentioned one time and it doesn't matter. Um, the whole thing with that is just complete nonsense and and doesn't make a lick of difference. I think he just found a boat wreck and he was like, "Wouldn't it be cool if we could make it feel like that rose up from the ocean, like some kind of, I don't know, uh, what Flying Dutchman of Nazis?" That's exactly what they did. They 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 took an actual freighter and buzzed mm -hmm. the boat they were on which you could clearly see was a freighter and then yeah. during the day they just went out and took a shot of this boat that was b banked out somewhere in the fucking bahamas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and the rest of it was shot in miami like like yeah in mainland miami in that biltmore i think it was a biltmore hotel that was a that was renovated a couple of years later and as they said he rented that hotel for two hundred dollars to make that movie because nice. uh, it was abandoned at the time, and now the a single room for a single night is more than two hundred dollars in that fucking hotel. Nice, yeah. Hey, hey. Ken Wiederhorn nailing it. <laughs> Great financial advisor, decent director. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, how much can I squeeze out of John Carradine and Peter Cushing? Okay, what if I don't focus on them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no shit. One can barely move, and I just went ahead and killed the other. 
<laughs> yeah. Right away. But I did glue a plexiglass pane to the bottom of this boat. Let's see how much can I how much action can I squeeze out of that cool little thing. Okay. What if I just did two dumb looking death scenes? I can't believe like as if the first one was so good, he had to do it again. Just float under the boat, <laughs> and I'll shoot you. Okay, and people will be terrified. Shove your nose up against it so that it really looks dead. It was great. Uh, this, yeah. So there's, uh, yeah, there's some pretty well known people in this movie. Um, Peter Cushing, uh, as we had mentioned, who had just, you know, was fresh in the heels of of playing Grand Moff Tarkin for Star yeah. Wars. Um, uh, the the New Hope movie, of course, and then you know also starred a million Hammer films, and everybody knows who Peter Cushing is. Brooke Adams, who I've always liked, uh, she was in yeah. the the seventies Donald Donald Souther pants version yes. of uh, the Invasion of Body Snatchers, a fine film that I uh, we we got real close to doing, I think, if I remember correctly. Oh, we we have plans. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I love that yeah. movie, by the way. Uh, it's great. She was in Days of Days of Heaven, the uh, What's His Nuts in the movie. That's a great movie too. Not a horror film, of course. Uh, yeah. It's basically the entire inspiration for There Will Be Blood. the The whole Ooh. style of that movie and everything is just taken directly from Terrence Malick's Day of Heaven, Days of Heaven, um, uh, and The Dead Zone. She was in The Dead Zone as well. Uh, yeah, she's great. I love her. She's she's got a very you know, like you, you see her face, and you're like, oh, that lady. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Oh, her. Nice. Yeah. Carradine, everybody knows the Carradine family. Uh, my favorite John Carradine role is in The Howling, the the werewolf movie. Yeah. Which is one I would I would like to do one day. But he was also in Vampire Hookers, so... Yes. You know. Yeah. No, if you go through the horror movies he was in just in the 70s, we could probably do just... Just John Carradine 70s horror movies for the entirety of 2023 and not run out. The Carradine zine. Yo! Oh. That was really, that wasn't worth it. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> father of John, I mean, father of David, Keith, and Robert. Yeah, the, 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 that one Carradine and then those other Carradines. <laughs> That's right. The American version of Stellan Skarsgård, except way less talented. <laughs> uh, there's also Fred Butch in here. That's right. Fred Butch. He, he was he played Angry Husband in Caddyshack. Wow. And uh, in this one, he plays a guy I like to call The Stash. <laughs> the Stash. <laughs> yeah. Or just Mustache. I like Mustache because he's He's completely incompetent and mute at the beginning of the film, which is wonderful. And then yes. suddenly he's like the studly guy who really doesn't accomplish anything anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and won't yeah. shut up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I like how this movie is basically a very dark take on Gilligan's Island. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> I just referred to him as hippie douche shipmate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I love how it's like set up where like the two of them are gonna do it, even though her like totally ripped boyfriend is there. He is the most physically fit looking doofus I've ever seen in my life. Like this dude is just like in perfect shape, and yet he is a total dweeb somehow too. Oh, he looks terrible. He's got that balding <laughs> pattern where it's like. The two sides are working back, but the front is still there. But then he has that, like, super afro style, like, loose black curl perm. Except it's not perm, I think it's just his hair. But then he's yeah. all ripped and is wearing, like, what was he wearing? Like, a fishnet wife beater or something? <laughs> yeah. It's like, dude. Yeah. And he's wearing the little 1970s dude napkin shorts. <laughs> the ball errors. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I need to give my balls some air. Sometimes I need to keep them compressed and separated. <laughs> Scrote chokers. Sometimes I need it to like really just try to squeeze my dick out of the top of the shorts. 
Jesus Christ. That guy was, I did not like looking at him. <laughs> no, no. I, like, I was like, oh man, this guy sucks. I was like, oh, he is, he is super like in shape though. But God, I hate this guy. <laughs> I can't wait to see this guy die. <laughs> yeah, and he, he has the stupidest character end arc. It just doesn't make sense. They're like, oh, okay, well, now how do we how do we make this foolproof plan fall apart? They should have they should have had first of all, they they should have had a sex scene. That was a crime, especially for nineteen seventy seven. Um, I mean, come on. Peter Cushing and John Carradine were right there. I mean you had <laughs> Hot lemon party action right at your fingertips. Oh man, how many undead Nazi uh, naval soldiers does it take to suck off two old dudes? <laughs> Answer all of them. <laughs> Ooh, taught in my corpse. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my god they oh, yeah they yeah. they missed a big opportunity and then they could have had something where she's like you know it comes out that she or greg finds out that she slept with the with the hippie douche and then there's some tension and then you know greg dies because of his jealousy like he makes some stupid decision and dies that would have been great that would have been perfect and it would have been a little bit more <laughs> like tubes of the blind <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah that and that's that brings up one of the big problems with this movie there's just not enough rape in it peter cushing's the guy on the local area where the boats are he should you know just just casually do a sexual assault and then Pull some liquor out of his back. Oh, there is a flask. That's yeah, true. Yeah, but 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 yeah. yeah, not not very much uh, sexual violence in this movie. He's the, he's also the least most Nazi ish Nazi in Nazi <laughs> filmdom. Although he does, to to his credit, have the most well preserved and largest Nazi flag I've ever seen in my life. Oh man, I like whatever they realize that they like show up in his Nazi paraphernalia room and they're like, oh yeah, this makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's like perhaps I have some things to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't eaten for twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's why he's so flimsy. He's just been living off coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't show the fact that he has a, a diarrheatorium. <laughs> he's just hand cranking his one record and eating coconuts. <laughs> yeah, he's got he's got one wax cylinder of Edelweiss that he just plays over and over again. <laughs> diarrheatorium. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Have you perhaps brought some food? <laughs> oh my god. He's on an island and he can't catch a fish. <laughs> <laughs> he, he does keep decorative fish. He has aquariums full of the fucking, uh, what are they, like sea urchins? That's true. And like lion the fish fanciest whatever. fish that he caught. Yeah, It's a lionfish or the dogfish or one of those. It's the real poisonous one. Yeah, the real motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that all vacate the aquarium that that woman gets dumped into. <laughs> yeah. It's like, where are all the fish? <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that scene with the zombie just sitting there casually, like lifting all the fish out. Yeah. And just dumping them on the out of here. There are too many fish for this woman to fit. <laughs> Get out of here, my bro. <clears throat> I'm about to dump a real fat lard in this bitch. <laughs> Oh, man. Wow. <laughs> what a good thing. Yeah. I guess we should probably summarize this yeah. this year movie. Let's do it. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'll start us off. Uh, 2023, new format, kind of. We're, we're doing the thing, but we're doing it the old way of the thing. You'll see. It, it comes across. It's great. <sighs> uh, a narrator introduces the idea of the supernatural Nazi uber soldiers that were never captured, a la the John intro that you just heard. Right. Um, 
And then we see uh, it's it's presented as a frame narrative. That narrator goes away. Our new narrator is Rose, who we see rescued from her derelict dinghy. Um, she is rescued by a fisherman who, played by actor Clarence Thomas. Great. Wow. Yes. Um, and uh, then she is narrating how she at this point couldn't remember anything. And it flashes back to uh, days before um, uh, to a fateful three hour tour that she went on with some other folks. Uh, the boat uh, that they are on is in bad shape. The mustache is confirmed to be a unskilled navigator. The captain seems senile, and then all of a sudden the sun glows a funny color, and they hear weird stuff in the ocean. <laughs> At this point, we're introduced to more of the cast, including the drunk galley hand Dobbs and a whiny vacationer named Norman. <laughs> The captain says the strange event was entirely natural and nothing to give refunds about. Rose and Mustache flirt until the boat is struck by some kind of other boat, which knocks over an awning. Mm -hmm. uh, the captain fires off a flare and we see that it was, in fact, a boat. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so we we cut to daytime, and now they're they're stuck. Their boat is jacked; it doesn't work. They can see the ghost ship, which is now a cement frame, completely stuck <laughs> stuck in the sand about a hundred yards away. It hasn't moved in like a hundred years, um, and uh, they can't find Ben. The captain is missing. Uh, he was checking under the boat to see if he could repair it or whatever the hell he thought he could do down there, but he's gone. Uh, and then we, we go see Dobbs is going to, you know, try to throw something together. Uh, so we get to see Dobbs' little galley with his booby wall that's like wall, yes. just wallpapered with naked lady pictures. <laughs> yeah, Dobbs is a real ladies' man. I love how often that shows up in these movies where there's just, there's just a booby room. <laughs> it's because you know they rented an actual boat that had that and they just had to get it in there. This oh yeah, they didn't go through their own magazines. <laughs> Little local color, <laughs> their own magazine. What do, what what do you think about this one? This one, yeah, let's cut this one out and put it on the wall, and make it look real dirty. We gotta get some kind of nudity in here. <laughs> the uh, yeah, the the gang is kind of like split up. I I kind of lost track of how uh, Rose or I forget who it was, but yeah, Rose, how she got there with Greg. I guess they went on their own or something because. Yeah. They were just suddenly they were gone, and then Keith, the the deckhand, takes the whiny couple or the whiny dude and his wife to the island. But the other ones are already there. Uh, yeah, it didn't make a lot of sense. But but on their way over in the dinghy, the the Aventura or whatever it was called, the one with the plexiglass window in the floor, that oh the Bonaventure. Bonaventure, that's it. They 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 see the captain, the captain's dead corpse float under the thing with his like face pressed against the plexiglass. It's really stupid. Yeah, and never explained. No, never explained. No. Then they see a tower in the distance jutting through the dense jungle-like growth. And so they hike in that direction and they find this empty building. It's, you know, an abandoned, big abandoned building. Pretty cool building, actually. Kind of yeah. cavernous and echoey. And uh, the sound design in this movie is, is something else. Um, <laughs> and then the music. Oh, my God. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, so then we go to the shipwreck and we see the some some bo black boots walking through the sand, trying really hard to walk the person through the bottom of the sea. <laughs> and it's a Nazi zombie with goggles on him and uh, like white hair, like very zombieish. I mean, very Nazi-ish. Not so zombieish looking. Yeah, just just kind of like um uh like John. Johnny Knoxville, uh, bad grandpa style makeup. <laughs> his balls are hanging out of his pant leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he heads to shore. I don't. It's like he's supposed to be like a scout or something. Then the the behavior of the Nazis is really baffling to me. But uh, yes, he just heads to shore. You know, and then uh, shore. Yeah, yeah, shore. Why not? Uh, the gang is is. Uh, uh, back in the in the hotel, they've they've all reunited. They're all together in this well building. I guess it's not considered a hotel at the time, but 
they're searching the the building and uh you can they can hear this classical music that has started playing and so they 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 wander around until they come towards like this old victrola machine the hand cranked turntable and then they're watching the record <laughs> <laughs> it, it stops. Then they hear Peter Cushing's voice off in the distance, the most British Nazi you've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> Who says, sometimes uses British for certain words and sometimes says the word in Nazi voice. Like, it's like, okay, dude, pick an accent. Uh, <laughs> whatever. He he makes an appearance and, you know, he's like, He's like a wraith. I mean, he's so skinny, and he has this ridiculous scar that runs all the way down from his forehead across his eye to his chin on the other side. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and awesome. Yeah, he, yeah. It is pretty awesome, yeah. He talks about them being stuck, and, you know, they're not. They're never going to be able to leave, and they're screwed up. And uh, they, the, a mention is made of the ghost ship called the... Uh, Proteus or whatever the hell it's called, the Proteolosis, yeah. <laughs> whatever. Back to the uh, back to the sea. The zomb Nazi gets back into the sea. the uh, The gang in the meantime decides they're going to get some sleep. And uh, while they're doing that, uh, a whole gang of Nazi zombies pop up out of the water together. Very, it was a cool shot, but it was ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And then we see we see Cushing, who's just you know kind of chilling. You know, whatever. Dobbs decides he's going to go off and uh, walk through the most disgusting, like, the, basically what we're going to see for most of the rest of the movie, this weird swampy sludge. So he just goes walking through this stuff, and he's, he realizes that something's possibly following him, as it turns out. It's one of the zombie Nazis who's approaching him. Uh, he freaks the fuck out and starts backing up. And apparently comes across a giant sea urchin den. <laughs> and before the zombie can even kill him, he falls onto the the sea urchins and kills himself, apparently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. G- yeah. Gets a face full of sea urchin spines. And then the zombie is probably like, For that was very easy. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I should finish drowning him. <laughs> I've been waiting so long to kill someone, and he did it for me. <laughs> How anticlimactic! <laughs> did you did you read, by the way, that those goggles were not originally in the plan? Like, a guy had to go get some sort of something done to procedure to his eyes, and when he came back, he was wearing these kind of goggle things to protect his eyes. <laughs> and Wiederhorn was like, "Hmm," and so they all got goggles. <laughs> I'm going to hang my whole movie on this peg. <laughs> it's actually going to matter later, kind of. So you think it was just like he got his eyes dilated and he had to get those old lady glasses? <laughs> I'm, I'm like, and apparently Wiederhorn liked the way it looked. And so in my mind, I'm like, did this guy go get his eyes dilated while in full costume? <laughs> What a badass if he showed up to the eye doctor in makeup, full makeup, and the Nazi SS uniform. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I... <laughs> I can't see out of my left eye so good. Could you uh, fix me up? <laughs> I seem to have a little piece of Jew in this eye. Can you? Is that... <laughs> 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 oh good okay <laughs> okay <laughs> let's see um uh mustache tracks down cushing finally meets him face to face he says that we got to get off this island and uh cushing is like well there is a dinghy <laughs> at this point Rows bikinis into the disgusting pond and discovers the urchin corpse of Dobbs with an SS patch stuck in his beard somehow. <laughs> uh, the makeup on him being covered in in uh, in uh, urchin spines that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. The dudes go looking for Cushing some more, and now they find him in his Nazi lounge where he has hung up all kinds of Nazi stuff where he just 
hangs out in that room. Uh, he explains that the Goggle Guys are members of Da Toten Corps, uh, undead sadists and murderers the Nazi turned into an uncon- <laughs> into uncontrollable berserkers. Um, Who move the, really the, slow. <laughs> yeah. The plan was that they were going to have them be a crew of a submarine that never had to come up for air, but also the plan was just that, like, they just kind of, like, let them loose on a battlefield and to do whatever. But ultimately, these Nazis were too Nazi for nazi so they were put on a boat and they, like, were sent out to sea to hang out and wait for more orders that never came. Okay. Um, yeah, and a then, really big plot hole. Yeah. So Cushing sunk the ship and waited on this island in self-imposed exile. And now the ship is back with the Toten Corpse. And uh, and then the, the group goes to find the dinghy. Uh, Cushing saunters around the island looking for his special boys and gets drowned by one of them. <laughs> um, in a real dumb looking scene, yeah. um, our crew begins to head out in the dinghy. The Toten Corpse gives lurky pursuit. Our crew loses the dinghy and must return to the island where they quickly get separated off screen. All of a sudden, they're just now looking for each other. And Norman freaks out because he can't find his perfectly normal wife that for some reason is married to him yeah uh, and so he starts shouting until he gets baptized to death by the toten corpse i love how he just like abandons rose and like he's just yeah. screaming for his wife and ignoring rose who's you know like wait <laughs> yeah yeah she, she's like dude stop yelling he's like fuck your tits <laughs> i have to find my beautiful wife and he's drowned in mere seconds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rose, Rose, in her uh, in her amazing trek outside of the hotel, uh, finds her way back to the hotel, <laughs> and, and the zombies start arriving on mass. There's uh, apparently there was only eight guys that played the zombies, but there was supposed to be just an indiscriminate amount of them. Really? It did, yeah, it didn't make any sense. It uh, felt like there were four. Yeah, I, I was like yeah. eight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was. All I remember was there was like two or three guys who looked the same, and then there was the fat bald guy. That's all I remember. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, how has he remained fat all this time? <laughs> well, he's that's a lot of water weight. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's a little bloated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, zombies arrive. She gets confronted by one of the zombies in her struggle to save herself. She tears his goggles off, which seemed really easy. Yes. And then he starts making this weird shrieking noise, and Ben just collapses and dies. Yeah. Like, uh, fully. <laughs> yeah. No. Makes no sense. And really doesn't even really <laughs> matter that much later. Um, yeah, because at one point there's a guy walking around with no goggles on, and it takes him a while to do anything. It's like, well, wait a minute. Yes. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so... Beverly and Chuck, uh, they they find Norman, and Beverly, like, she doesn't even care. Like, she's, <laughs> she's not relieved to see her dead husband. She's not upset. She's completely unmoved by, just like, uh, well, here does Norman. I guess we shall go back to the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been Perhaps. rejoicing. <laughs> yeah, he's the worst. <laughs> we haven't harped on him at all, but he's been complaining the whole time. He's been like trying to usurp the captain's authority. He's he all of these jokes surrounding how much luggage he has with him and how he wants to bring it on the dinghy and like are you coming or is your luggage coming? It like all throughout. He's like the shtick guy and it's really obnoxious. He's the, uh, I forget the character's name, Franklin in Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the wheelchair yes. guy. Yes. <laughs> the funny thing about Norman is that he doesn't really screw up their plans. Like, usually the the idiot gets everyone in trouble, you know. But uh, other he than the fact that He only gets they... himself in trouble, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, other than the fact that they have to stuff, suffer this moron. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so they find him, no one cares. Uh, yeah. Keith, the mustachioed hippie dork, is uh, back at the hotel, he sees a, a rotting zombie, the one that had his goggles yanked off, 
he actually looks somewhat the worse for wear than the others, uh, who just look like they're covered in latex. And then <laughs> he and Rose are, you know, like prepping, like getting just getting some shit together, and they find Beverly. And uh, <clears throat> in the meantime, uh, Chuck is is being a total bitch. He does not want to. I kept calling him Greg, but his name's Chuck. He doesn't want to. I was wanna... wondering. I was like, now I've lost track of who any of these people are. <laughs> the Greg is the uh, muscular folks, the muscular douche with the curly hair. Uh, oh yeah. He's being a bitch because he doesn't want to hide in the fridge, and then they they hide in the fridge, and he starts panicking because he's claustrophobic, which just suddenly is a huge deal. Like, yeah, really, really big deal. Um, he he's got that special kind of claustrophobia that only hits you like about three hours later. Yeah, like nothing that happened to them was even remotely claustrophobic until then. Uh, yeah. So he loses <laughs> his mind completely in just terrible acting job. Beverly yells at yes. him. Uh, and then they turn the lights off, which are oil lamps. And then he completely loses it. Like, just breaks the fuck out, gets a, gets a hold of a gun. Uh, it, all the noise he's making okay, causes the zombies to, like, rage through the building, I guess. Or they're just doing that anyway, throwing everything left and right, trying to find the people. Um, he gets a hold of the gun, freaks the fuck out. Keith, he's, like, demanding to be let out or he's gonna, you know, I don't know shoot everybody. And so Keith Mustache Guy lets him out. Or tries to let him out, and yeah. there's this big struggle, and then the door slams on his arm, but he he gets a hold of the, the it turns out the gun is a flare gun, yeah. So he he I think he accidentally shoots the flare gun in the struggle, and the flare goes directly into the fridge, and everyone except Beverly, who's in the back corner, gets out. She's blinded by the flare that never stops burning, yes. and and it's so weird. And then then we yeah. we. We watch Chuck as he's just wandering around, and then, like an idiot, slowly walks backwards until he falls into a pool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereupon he he has a like two or three minute in a, in the pool, out of the pool, struggling with a zombie, getting away from a zombie, and then finally just yeah. killed. Yeah. <laughs> it's like wow. Okay. Yeah. There's no gore in this movie whatsoever. No, I don't think there's no. a drop of blood in this movie. I don't think so. There. I, there, I felt like maybe there was for a second when he got his hand crunched, uh, but I don't remember. But, maybe, yeah. Other than that, it's just uh, the scene where uh, he got um, like quills in his face. Oh, uh, that's true. But yeah. but even then, it's bloodless. It's yeah, just, that's true. It's, it's bloodless. just pale kind makeup, a little gruesome, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So he gets he gets killed. Great after this weird like ballet dance that he does with this one zombie in the water. But anyway, she ends up dead. And then Rose and Keith, uh, they take off. They've abandoned Beverly. Fuck her. And they go hide in this boiler. And uh, and back with Beverly, she's now blind. She's been blinded by this flare. She's stumbling around the kitchen area. She finds a knife, works her way back to the fridge, I guess, to get safety or whatever. <laughs> Makes no sense. The, yeah. the, the Horde of zombies are leaving the water again to to arrive at the island. It I, it never makes any sense. It's like <laughs> there's like waves of zombies just coming and going, always showing up wherever somebody runs to. <laughs> it's, like, it's I don't know. It's the strangest thing. It uh, got pretty hard to follow. I was yeah. like, I don't, I don't know. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Beverly stumbles basically into a zombie who isn't wearing goggles and it has no reference re relevance whatsoever. Uh, nope. And then we see that she's been stuffed in the fish tank, the one where he had very carefully without his goggles uh, removed all the fish first. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Rose and Rose and Keith come across. They've come out of the 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 uh, boiler, whatever. They see Greg in the pool. Great. No one cares. They find the first dinghy, the Bonaventura, mm -hmm. um, and the zombies start attacking them as they're trying to leave the island. Keith degoggles one of them. Uh, this scene goes on way too long. It's really ridiculous. Yes. yes. Uh, he finally is drowned, and she sees him just like they saw the captain, his corpse float by under the boat. And then for some reason, they just stop attacking her, and we cut to her in a hospital bed. And where she apparently just writes in her journal 50,000 times, like, 
Water slapping against the side. Water slapping against the side. <laughs> Water is that what she slapping. <laughs> I, I don't know if that was. She's supposed to be going mad a la like Lovecraft tale where, you know, the guy's writing his fate and he goes mad at the end or whatever. I don't know. <sighs> that makes sense. I couldn't read what she was writing, but yeah, at that point, the music like swells dramatically, like, ooh. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Her handwriting's getting sloppy. I think she's naturally right handed and she's trying with her left. What do you want? What do you, what want? Do you want from this scene? <laughs> and the movie's over and I'm reading yeah. the credits. It's like, they don't talk about where it was shot. They don't refer to the building. They don't credit anybody for the music. It's it's some of the most Spartan uh, credits I've ever seen. There's like very little information in them. Yeah. The actors, the, the basic crew, probably the entire crew of the movie only yeah. cost $200,000. But And uh, that was it. Yeah. Suddenly the movie's just done and that's it. Great. Over. Hey, over. I, uh first saw this movie back in the 80s with yeah. my dad who had my parents had just split and my dad got this apartment and we always hated going there to visit so uh because there's nothing to do you know yeah. so we would just sit there and watch cinemax all night and one night we were sitting there and this movie came on and it was just it became one of those movies where you know for years we would talk about it because it was so ridiculous we would just laugh about it and then one day, I was living downtown in this city that I live. I was living in downtown <laughs> Houston. And yeah. um, I was walking home from work one day, and there was this house down the street, and this guy had, like, a videotape sale. And it was, like, this weird kind of older house because it's it's on the edge of downtown. It's a nice area now, but at the time, it was a little rough. So I was like, oh, I guess I'll go into this total stranger's house and look around. So I went in. And he had tables set up all over the ground floor that were covered. Each table probably had 500 video cassettes, like, spined up. And they were he was selling them for, like, four for a dollar or whatever. Nice. So I, I went back home and got my roommate. We went back and we looked through there and spent as long as we could stomach because the guy wouldn't shut up. But oh, I, picked no. up, I picked up Shockwaves because I, yeah. I was like, oh, it's Shockwaves. I picked up <laughs> The Thing. Nice. And um, I picked up a porno movie called Inside Seika, which uh, <laughs> <laughs> which was horrible, but did have one highlight. I got to see Ron Jeremy suck his own dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this movie holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> Forever be paired with Ron Jeremy sucking his own dick. Who, when he when he approaches orgasm, you hear a slide flute. <laughs> He's like, oh, that feels pretty good. <laughs> Still got that oh. one, folks. <laughs> yeah, what an amazing man. Oh, the hedgehog. <laughs> So that's that movie. Yeah, yeah that's uh, Shockwaves. It's uh, It was fun. Yeah, yeah. And we've been talking about covering this basically all the way since the beginning. Like, I, I think when we were first conceiving of doing this podcast, it was one of the first ones that you mentioned, like, oh, we should do Shockwaves. Yeah, because it's, you know, I mean, it goes back to when I was a kid. And so you have these, these goofy memories. I mean, another, it's not a horror film, but I feel the same way about Conan the Barbarian with Schwarzenegger. Because we went and saw that in the theater. And... My dad hated it, and I was like, I guess I'm not allowed to say that I fucking love this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's like the best movie ever. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's really funny. Like, I remember his reaction to the, the thing, which we talked about on the thing episode, the, the remake, how much he fucking hated it because of the gore and all that. And I remember when I saw it, I was like, this movie is amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so much better than that piece of shit with James Arnett. <laughs> oh man, I bet your dad's uh, movie podcast would be really something. <laughs> it would just be him talking about Top Gun for a year. 
Oh, no. <laughs> and then I got this stereo set up, which I spent six months getting tweaked. And then, uh, and then I every time anybody would ever come over to my house, I would force them to go to my basement and make them listen to the loudest scene in the movie. I so many decibels that they went deaf for an hour. Then I would drink oh, yeah. a bunch of scotch and pass out, and they'd be left to their own devices. Nice! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hypothetically. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, cool dude. <laughs> He's an interesting guy. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, so, so I gave this movie a 2.7 out of 5 loathsome things. It got it got almost full marks for enjoyability. There yeah. were, there were times where it dipped because like like what the fuck is even going on? But most of the time that I was watching it, I was having a lot of fun. Um, it's it's fully in the horror movie category. It does all of the things. There's there's some technical bad that's just oof bad. Like we. At the beginning, there's the 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 natural phenomena of the sun glowing a strange color and noises coming from under the ocean. We never get an explanation for that. Like, obviously, the noise must be the boat rising, the Nazi boat rising from under the ocean. But why did the sun do the thing? Did the sun uh, atmospheric thing cause the boat to rise? Like, what's going on? We don't know. Also, if there... If they're Nazis that can live underwater and on land, why did they need the boat <laughs> to take them to the land? Why didn't they just get off the boat when it was still underwater? Why is the boat there at all? It, yeah, it. Yeah, that was really. There was a lot of things that didn't make any sense, and they were they were just so poorly thought out. It just, I, they just. It's like they came up with a, it. It's like an author comes up with a first draft, doesn't edit it. Mm -hmm. doesn't you know edit it for like clarity and and uh flow just farts out a first draft it's got some cool ideas in it and somebody goes ahead and publishes it and that's the book and it's like mm -hmm. wait what about okay no that's no but okay but what about the okay no 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 yeah that's that's this yeah. the movie yeah yeah this is this is uh this is that college essay that you turn in without revising because you're just fucking done with it like, exactly. i don't i don't fucking care anymore let's just be done with this and move on with our lives the good thing is it's i think it's on under 80 minutes if i remember correctly yes yeah so whenever i was sending you the the time stamps oh that's I, right I, yeah i looked at it and i was like oh, okay an hour and 20 minutes so each of our six segments should be 20 minutes each and then i like got to the end and there was only four segments and i was like oh it's 80 minutes it's it's one hour 20 20 not 120 minutes okay yeah so yeah it's like an 80 minute movie it's good and short it's it's action packed we've got a lot a lot of good brooke adams action a lot of good peter cushing in here some other folks there's really good scenes i really like the scenes where the nazis go into the water them coming out of the water not as impressive but there's this one scene where they're in a line and they're all just slowly like walking down the stairs of the ocean and going in like it's no problem, which is which is very effective. I thought they did a good job. They must have plugged their noses or something because I was totally looking for air bubbles mm -hmm. and none of them in any of the shots ever showed any sign of air bubbles. It was really well done. I was surprised. Yeah, um, that's that good Nazi discipline. Yeah, that's right. Um, as far as rating it, it's funny that you said 2.7, because I was going to give it a 2.7. <laughs> and then Do I decided, it. I decided, no, but I, no, I, I this was pre previous to your rating. But then oh. I decided I was going to give it a 2.75. Okay. Because it's a little bit closer to three. <laughs> <laughs> and that little bit closer counts for me liking the movie as just a sentimental thing, but not enough to like really change my rating too much. It's not a three. It's a three is yeah. the better. Well, two point seven five is the better a three two, but I mean a better five two. But what it's, are you I'm gonna saying? Give it a, <laughs> I'm saying in the rating system, two point five would be halfway. So. You yeah. know, if I, I I was stupidly saying that if I gave it a three, that would be the better part of five. 
as opposed to 2.75, which is also the better part of 5. Okay. I'm, I'm not a mathematician, you. although I just got an A in a statistics class. <laughs> nice! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Still in college in my 50s. <laughs> Carry the one! <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah. Uh, oh god, yeah. God help me. So, uh, anyways, I'm not even going to try to add those two up. 27 and 27 is 50... Five point six no. seven seven eight five no. point nine six point. Go ahead. It's five point four. Damn it! Crap <laughs> on it. Five point four five, four, five out of ten loathsome things. That's pretty good. I mean, that's not bad. It's, it's definitely the kind of movie that you can easily turn on and be like. That's the thing. That's the thing with a random horror movie that you've never seen, especially an old one. Well, no, all of them. It's like, I've never seen anything. I've never heard of this movie. I'm going to turn it on. I don't know whether or not I'll enjoy it. You turn this one on, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a good time. If you haven't listened to us talk about it, you're going to be like, oh, look, yeah, Peter Cushing, neat. It's, it's, oh, yeah, that, yeah, it's, that it's guy a cool... that jacked off to death. His dad is in this. <laughs> it's a nice little conceit. It doesn't, uh, take itself seriously and it it doesn't lay heavy on the nazi thing it's just an idea it doesn't we don't have to get all this otherwise uh, it must be the way to the fatherland like none of that crap yeah. it's just they're just a bunch of murderous weirdos who live at the bottom of the ocean and he's just this old idiot who just lives in an abandoned hotel for no reason that's basically and then these poor people bumble in and die yeah, yeah. and then one lady gets away to tell the tale that's fine Yep. That's good quality, just basic horror subgenre fare. And uh, it's a decent movie. Yeah, yeah, it's enjoyable. I will say the, uh, oh yeah, uh, stumble across uh, hidden hidden Nazi leftovers is like one of my least favorite horror movie conceits. It It's very cringy to me, but this one does it well because it doesn't really hammer on it. In this, it's really more just like a stylistic choice more than like a... A whole thing. It felt like a almost like a precursor to uh, Hellboy or something with those weird, those weird ways that uh, that Mignola did of of like, uh, like almost cyberpunking the the Nazis with their weird technology and like goofy occult insanity and stuff. It kind of touched on that a little bit, which was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it would also work good with uh, um, like being part of the Frankenstein's army verse and and yeah. A lot, a lot of good. Yeah. A lot of good. Yeah. Yeah. So, decent movie. I, I would say check it out. Um, have you seen, uh, did you watch any horror stuff or any oh. good horror st- or movies or anything? I watched The Apology mm. on on Shudder. Mm-hmm. Uh, rip Shudder on all the <laughs> employees. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh, Anna Gunn and Janine Garofalo, and she's, um, she's the, uh, uh, alcoholic or for like recovering alcoholic mother of a missing daughter Mm -hmm. and uh and it's like the day before christmas and she's preparing it's been 20 years it's like the 20 year anniversary of her daughter going missing or whatever it's also like the 20 year anniversary of her being sober and we find out that it was uh her daughter went missing on a night that she got like super crazy drunk and whatever and then a dude shows up and she's like "Ooh, it's him and they have like a history and all of this stuff and it goes back and then you know stuff happens things happen stuff happens that's jenny garofalo is there oh okay i was gonna say yeah anna gunn is the the lead yeah yeah, yeah. was it good yeah it was good yeah it's uh it's um have you seen hard candy no but i know what you're talking about yeah, it's hard. It's it's very hard candy style, but with a little bit more of like a cat and mouse game situation. Yeah, it's enjoyable and good. Watch it. No, I'll check it out. What about yourself, John? <laughs> well, I had mentioned to you that I saw uh, Prisoners, which I knew nothing about. Uh, yeah. My daughter was visiting, and we were just trying to think of something to watch, and she recommended that, and I was like, okay, whatever. I mean, I'll watch it. I don't know. I didn't know what it was, and uh, I just thought it was like a crime thriller. And uh, it turned out to be pretty nasty little movie. Actually, like, kind of Passion of the Christ adjacent when it came to violence. I mean, there's 
there's a torture thread that runs through that movie that is unrelenting and, and merciless. You know, like it doesn't even have the undercurrent of spirituality or anything. It's just straight, like the violence and, and the reasoning for it and all that is, is actually pretty interesting. It's a little long um, and it definitely has its issues, but it's a good little movie. Um, it's not really horror, but it certainly works. You know, it's definitely even a little closer than horror adjacent. It's like, but anyways, it was decent. Denis, Denis Villeneuve made it, which I had no clue. Um, wow. I'm a big fan of his. And so I was, you know, I was surprised to, cause I had never even heard of this movie. Probably cause it, I saw, probably saw, oh, Hugh Jackman, not watching that. And, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and he was a little over the top with it, but, uh, it was still good. I don't know. Did you, did you end up seeing it? I haven't watched it. it it's, I've been short on time and uh, it was, I was going to see if Melanie would watch it with me. And so she was like, well, what is it? And I was like, it's kind of a thriller. It's got Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal in it. And she was like, all right, well, is it like gory or gross or anything like that? And I was like, I don't know. Let me go check the, uh, the content warnings. And then I was like, oh yeah, apparently it's uh, full of intense torture scenes throughout its two and a half hour long run. She was like, I don't, I don't want to watch that. So I'm, I'm going to find some time to watch it, but I haven't gotten there yet. But I have been seeing it all of a sudden all over the internet. It's been popping up. Specifically that scene with him like running down the street and there's so much rain that the street has like little bit like beginning of flood level mm -hmm. water running over the, the blacktop. That's been showing up all over the internet for me, even before you mentioned it. So I think all of a sudden people are like, oh yeah, that director did anything before Dune. It's crazy because he, well, he did The Arrival, which I liked a lot. And he did, you know, the one about the, where the aliens come to the earth and uh, Amy Adams is like a linguist and they, they send her oh, out because yeah, these yeah, yeah. cthulhu -y aliens are trying to communicate. So yeah, the he did that. aliens. He, yeah. He did this. This movie, which I didn't know about, Prisoners, and he did did a really cool short about. Uh, I just I won't even get like give any of it away. It's really good if you can find it on YouTube. It's hilarious. Um, and then he did uh, this this doc, kind of like a docu drama style movie. He's from Canada, so this was like shot up in Quebec or whatever. It's in French about this guy. It's a true story who went on a kill like a shooting spree at the. I forget what it's called. Montreal Polytechnic for Women or whatever. It's a women's university. And he was some sort of incel douchebag mm. who hated women and went on a shooting rampage in this school. And the movie is just like kind of a blow by blow about what happened. It's it's very intense. That's Shit. For, his, for a no budget movie. But uh, yeah, I was like, man, this guy's really talented. And when I heard he was making Dune, I'm like, are you guys sure you want this guy? Because he does some weird shit. But he was, Dune was great. Yeah. Very cool. And you you taught me how to pronounce his name. I never knew. I thought I would have said Dennis. Dennis Villanueve. <laughs> Villeneuve. Yeah. Denis? Yeah. Try, I've been trying to get into uh, a lot more, like, I like actually dig into horror literature. So, you know, I'll see where that leads me. But, of course, that world is very deep. I just knew nothing about it. I knew it was. I just didn't. I didn't even know the slightest. So... I'd rebooted my whole Twitter profile. I deleted my original one and just started a, a new one just following stuff that I like. I, like, I delete any or block any political anything. Nice. Like, I don't want any of that shit. So I just follow, like, authors and, you know, whatever, movie people and stuff. And it's been much more pleasant. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I've I've basically, like, just not been on social media at all i uh i except i i did i started my own actual reddit account and i started following like the baseball card reddit and nice. stuff like that and it's it's much better Tw twitter really always sucked and it really it just took elon musk buying it to make me realize how horrible it was yeah it, it twitter is something that you have to kind of you have to know how to tweak it to your advantage otherwise it's just unbearable yeah. Uh, yeah. So, anyways. Well, yeah. that's it. That's uh, that's Shockwaves. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Ken Weederhorn. Wienerhorn. Weeder. Uh, is there anything else you want to... Uh, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do it all the obvious ways. Just look for loads and things online. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to plug one thing. I just published my first ever role-playing game. 
Oh. Uh, yeah, self-published, so it's it's That's not right. like yeah. So you can find that. I'll probably put the link in the show notes. It's two x x x promised land. It's a hack of the twenty four x x s r d by Jason Taki, and uh, it's about um, AI worshiping cultists nice. who are uh, traveling to a distant planet to colonize it, and. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a fun little thing. Download it. It's completely for free. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, definitely check it out, folks, cuz I know that you're I mean, you you enjoy RPG stuff. I've never been able to get into it. I just I just haven't, but you know, I know that some of the you know, some of the games I'll read about, I'm like, that sounds really cool. <laughs> and yeah. that sounds really cool. So <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it honestly rpgs uh, does very similar things with horror movies where like you've got the big budget things which is dungeons and dragons that everyone talks about mm. and and there are other bigger budget things but there's honestly like a really cool indie scene with like all sorts of like no budget rpgs coming out all the time where people are really like pioneering new gameplay experiences and it's a lot of fun that's really cool yeah, I like that. I like that. It, that's one of the good things about the internet is that, you know, if you want to be creative and you want to put the effort in, you can find a community of people who, you know, you fit right in with, you know, yep. instead of spending your entire life wondering if you're just, since there's just something wrong with you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's yeah. like, why do I like this so much? Oh, wait, there's literally millions of people who like this stuff, too, you know? Yeah, yeah. Why don't girls like me? Well, you can go on the internet and find other white dudes who girls also don't like. <laughs> and you can find girls who like you, too. Maybe. That are into that stuff. It's a little weird, but yeah. it works. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Who, who can say? <laughs> who can say? <sighs> All right. Go out there, watch good horror movies and other kinds of movies too and other things that aren't movies and tell us about them or not. Correct. We have ways of making you talk. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm sorry that you have to die. <laughs> and why, I, stop recording. Why did I turn Italian right at the end there? I don't... 